So covalent bonds are those where the electrons are shared between the atoms. These typically occur between two nonmetals. So there's three types of bonds, single, double, and triple. In a single bond, we're gonna represent them with these lines. So each line represents one pair of electrons being shared. They're the lowest in energy, and they're the longest in bond length. So a double bond is gonna be represented with two lines, and that's gonna be two pairs of electrons being shared. A triple bond is three pairs of electrons being shared, or six electrons all together. They're the strongest bond, and the shortest end bond length. So your steps to drawing the Lewis structures are on your paper. The first thing is you're gonna add up the total number of valence electrons. So in this problem, we have BF3. So P has five valence electrons. Because it's one, two, three, four, five. And then each fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But there's three fluorines, so seven times three is 21. So when I add those, five and 21, I get 26 valence electrons to work with. Next, I'm gonna figure out who the central atom is. This is the atom with the fewest number or the least electronegative element. Hydrogen can never be the central atom. So I have one P and three fluorine. So P is gonna go in the middle. Then I'm gonna place all the other atoms around the central atom. I'm gonna subtract two electrons from the total number of valence electrons for every bond, which are those lines that you drew. So that's two, four, six. So I have 20 valence electrons left. So it doesn't matter that fluorine came in with seven, right now it's just got a line. That line counts for two for it and two for phosphorus. Step four says fill the octets of all the peripheral atoms. Exception, hydrogen can only hold two. And then step five, place any electrons which are left over on the central atom in pairs. Everything must get eight with the exception of hydrogen for now. So this phosphorus, or this fluorine, currently has two electrons. Because there's one there and one there. So it needs six more. This fluorine only has a bond, which is two, so it needs six more. This fluorine needs six more, and the central atom has two, four, six. So it still needs two. Don't forget about the central atom. So I need six plus six plus six plus two, which is 20. I have 20. Therefore, I can add them as lone pairs. Lone pairs are the dots that we're gonna add on each one. So you must put them in pairs. So that's two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Everything has eight, and then double check that you've used 26, no more, no less. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. If I've used too many or not enough, then my structure is incorrect. So this is the correct structure for PF3. So step six was to always check to see if the central atom has at least eight electrons. It may have an expanded octet, which will be up to six pairs of electrons in some cases, or 12 electrons. If the central atom does not have at least an octet, it will make a double or triple bond. Boron is only gonna get six electrons and beryllium gets four. So hydrogen, boron, and beryllium do not get eight electrons. Everything else better have eight. And finally, if the particle is an ion, we're gonna place it in brackets and put the charge on the outside when we're done. So one more together, carbon tetrachloride. If the formula is not given, you have to write it. So we have one carbon, tetra four, so four chlorides. 
So step one is we need to add up our valence electrons. So go ahead and pause the video, count your valence, and restart when you have your answer. You should have gotten 32. Carbon came in with four, and chlorine came in with seven. So 28 plus four is 32. Next, you need to figure out who your central atom is going to be. In this case, it's going to be carbon because I only have one carbon and I have four chlorine. Each line represents two electrons, so two times four is eight. I've got 24 left. The central atom has two, four, six, eight. So the central atom carbon is good. It has a full octet. But my chlorines only have two right now, so they all need six more. Six times four is 24, so I can add them as lone pairs. So make sure that we're good on our vocab. Every set of these are lone pairs of electrons, also referred to as non-bonding electrons because they're not involved in bonding. They're all to chlorine self. While the lines are a single bond, are bonding pair of electrons. So this has four sets of bonding pairs of electrons, and then each chlorine has three lone pairs because it's a pair of electrons. All right, nitrogen gas, Nitrogen, remember, is diatomic, so it can't be by itself, so it's going to be N2. So go ahead and add up your valence electrons. Restart when you have your valence. So you should have said you had 10 valence electrons. In this problem, we don't have a central atom because we only have two atoms, so they're going to be hooked together. So we're going to subtract two. We have eight left. This nitrogen currently has two, so it needs six more. This nitrogen has two, so it needs six more. I need 12, but I have eight. When you need more than you have, you have to share more. Same thing if you go to the store and you don't have enough money to buy something on your own, you can get your friend or your brother or sister to chip in some of their money and then you can share whatever product you purchased. So to share more, we're going to add a, another line. Every line is two, so that means I have six left. So now this nitrogen has four, so it needs four. And this nitrogen also has four, so it needs four. So I need eight altogether. But again, I only have six now. So I still don't have enough. So I'm going to add another line. The most you can have is three or a triple bond. So I subtract my next two. I have four left. This nitrogen has six, two, four, six. So it needs two more. This nitrogen also only needs two more. So I need four. I have four. So now that my need and have match, I can add them as a lone pair. So I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and I have 2, 4, 6, 8 for this nitrogen, and 2, 4, 6, 8 for that nitrogen. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out your valence electrons, who's in the center, and start trying to draw this one. Restart when you have your answer. So carbon dioxide is CO2 and I have 16 valence electrons. You should have had carbon in the middle and two oxygens coming off, which means you should have subtracted four, giving you 12 left. This oxygen needed six, this carbon needs four, this oxygen needs six. So I need 16, but I have 12. So I need more than I have. So I'm going to add one double bond. You add one double bond at a time. 
Don't forget to subtract from your total or you're going to think that you have more electrons than you do. So now this oxygen needs four and carbon needs two. We haven't touched that oxygen, so it still needs six. Six plus four plus two is 12. So I need 12, but I only have 10. So that means I need a double bond again. We're going to double bond both sides before triple bonding if it's symmetrical like it is in this case. So I subtract another two. This oxygen hasn't been touched, but carbon now has two, four, six, eight. So it doesn't need any. And this oxygen has four, so it needs four more. So now I need eight. I have eight. So you should have added two sets of lone pairs on each oxygen. Go ahead and pause the video and try doing this one on your own. Restart when you have water done. So water was H2O. Add in your valence. You should have gotten eight valence. Oxygen should have been in the middle. And hydrogen's coming off. You've used four. Hydrogen, remember, is good. It doesn't get eight. All it gets is a line. So no dots on hydrogen when it's in a compound. All it gets is a line. So hydrogen is good. It needs no more. Hydrogen needs no more. And oxygen has four. It needs four. So it matches. So you should have just drawn two lone pairs on it. And that's water. So ammonium ion is NH4 plus 1. So just like before, we would add our valence electrons. We would say nitrogen has 5. Each hydrogen has 1, so 4 times 1. Adding those up, you get 9. But it's a positive 1, which means we need to subtract 1. If it's negative, you're going to add that number to your total. If it's positive, you're going to subtract that number from your total. So we only have eight valence electrons to work with. So now it's going to be solved the exact same way. So go ahead and draw your Lewis structure for ammonium. Restart when you have your answer. So you should have had nitrogen in the middle, four hydrogens coming off. But at this point, you've used all your electrons. All the hydrogens are good. Nitrogen currently has eight, so this is our structure. The only other thing we have to do is make sure that you put brackets and the charge on the outside if it was an ion. Go, go ahead and solve sulfate on your own. Restart when you have your final structure. So sulfate is SO4, negative 2. So you should have gotten 6 times 4, and that one's a 6, so that's 30. But we're going to add 2 to it, so 32 electrons. Sulfur should have been in the middle. So we subtract 8. Each oxygen still needs 6. But sulfur didn't need any more because it currently has 8. So 6 times 4 is 24. We have just enough electrons. Don't forget your brackets in charge. 